Welcome to the 2024 CDL General Knowledge Practice Test. This test is 60 questions with explained answers to help you prepare for this test. Before we get started, don't forget to jumpstart that like button to keep this channel running. Now here is your CDL instructor to walk you through the questions. Question one, a bus may be classified as which of the following? A, class A, B, class A, B, C, class C, D. Depends on the GVWR is over 26,001 pounds. The correct answer is C, Class C. A bus may be Class A, B, or C, depending on whether the GVWR is over 26,001 pounds or is a combination vehicle. Question 2. What is not true about a school bus? A. It must be owned by the school district. B. It is a motor vehicle designed to carry more than 10 people. C. It is used to transport students to and from school or school-related activities. D. Type C is the most common school bus on the road. The correct answer is A. It must be owned by the school district. A school bus does not need to be owned by a school district. A school bus is leased, contracted to, or operated by a school, school board, or school district. There are eight different types of school buses, and C is the most common one used. Question 3. A blank is permanently attached to or forms a part of a motor vehicle or is not permanently attached to a motor vehicle, but which, by reason of its size, construction, or attachment to a motor vehicle, is loaded or unloaded without being removed from the motor vehicle. A. Skid steer. B. Baffle. C. Bulkhead. D. Cargo tank. The correct answer is D. Cargo tank. Cargo tanks vary in size, shape, and purpose. They can be permanently attached to the vehicle. However, if the cargo tank is not attached to the vehicle, it will be loaded or unloaded without being removed. Question 4. Blank are required on all converter dollies built after March 1, 1998. A. Air compressor valve. B. Trailer protection valve. C. Anti-lock brakes. D. Spring brakes. The correct answer is C, anti-lock brakes. A converter dolly is an unpowered vehicle that enables trailer units to pull tractors. It has one or more axes, a fifth wheel, and drawbar. All dollies built after March 1, 1998 are required to have anti-lock brakes. Question 5. An example of a Class 6 hazardous material is blank A, propane, B, potassium cyanide, C, ammunition, D, battery fluid? The correct answer is B. Potassium cyanide. The name for class 6 hazardous material is poison, toxic material, infectious substances. Class 6 are classified as toxic substances. Materials under this code are liable to either cause death, serious injury, or harm to human health. The class 6 placard is white with black lettering with a picture of a skull. Question 6. What braking technique should be used when going down a steep downgrade? A. Same braking as normal. B. Snub braking. C. Stab braking. D. Engine braking. The correct answer is D. Engine braking. Engine braking is the process of taking the foot off of the accelerator while downshifting gears. There are many benefits to engine braking, such as safety while downhill driving improved fuel efficiency, and lower maintenance cost. Question 7. What is one way to control a surge? A. Pump the brakes. Do not release brakes too soon when coming to a complete stop. B. Use stab braking before coming to a complete stop. Use a low gear to help slow the vehicle down. C. Keep a steady pressure on the brakes before coming to a complete stop. D. Keep a 7-second following distance. The correct answer is C. Keep a steady pressure on the brakes before coming to a complete stop. Surges can be minimized by maneuvering the vehicle gently. One example is to apply and keep steady pressure on the brakes before coming to a complete stop, especially at intersections. Question 8. What are the three factors that stopping distance consists of? A driver's reaction time, brake lag, PSI of the tire, B, driver's reaction time, tire tread, braking distance, C, 
driver's reaction time, brake lag, braking distance, D, driver's reaction time, ambient temperature, braking distance. The correct answer is C, driver's reaction time, brake lag, braking distance, braking distance, the actual distance the vehicle travels after the brake is applied until the vehicle stops. Drivers should never take their brakes for granted. Driver's reaction, time is the time it takes from the moment a hazard is recognized to the time the brake is applied. Approximately three-four of a second brake lag is the time it takes the air to travel through a properly maintained air brake system. Question nine. What precautions should a driver take when driving on black ice? A. Get off the road immediately. B. Drive slow. C. Keep a safe distance. D. Use safe braking techniques. The correct answer is A. Get off the road immediately. It is unsafe for any vehicle to drive on black ice. Driving a tanker is especially hazardous and should never be attempted. Question 10. Because double and triple trailers have more blank to pull, it increases chances of losing traction and skidding in adverse weather conditions. A. Dead axles. B. Ring hitches. C. Converter gears. D. Kingpins. The correct answer is A. Dead axles. Drivers of double and triple trailers have longer length and more dead axles to pull with their drive axles. Drivers must be especially careful during mountain driving and adverse weather that cause slippery conditions. Question 11. A tanker endorsement is needed if your vehicle A. Requires a Class A, B, and D license. B. Has an aggregated weight of 115 gallons of liquid or liquid gas. C is transporting any hazardous medical waste. D. Is hauling liquid gas in a tank with an individual rated capacity of 120 gallons. The correct answer is D. Is hauling liquid gas in a tank with an individual rated capacity of 120 gallons. A tank endorsement is required if your vehicle needs a Class A or B CDL and you want to haul a liquid or liquid gas in a tank or tanks having an individual rated capacity of more than 119 gallons. Question 12. It is illegal to operate a CMV if your blood alcohol concentration, BAC, is blank or more. A. 0.03%. B. 0.04%. C. 0.05%. D. 0.06%. The correct answer is B, 0.04%. It is illegal to operate a CMV if your blood alcohol concentration, BAC, is 0.04% or more. If you operate a CMV, you shall be deemed to have given your consent to alcohol testing. Question 13. Bulkheads are different from baffled tanks because A. Baffled tanks have bulkheads in them with holes that let the liquid flow through. B. Bulkheads have only one hole in them to prevent a liquid surge. C. Baffled tanks are easier to clean than those with only bulk heads. D. Bulkheads help prevent front-to-back surges while baffles help prevent side-to-side -side surges. The correct answer is A. Baffled tanks have bulkheads in them with holes that let the liquid flow through. Baffled tanks have bulkheads in them with holes that let the liquid flow through and bulkheads themselves do not have any holes. They simply create smaller tanks within the tank vehicle. Question 14. What type of fuel is used for a school bus? A. Diesel. B. Gasoline. C. Propane. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. Knowing what type of fuel is very important. If the wrong fuel is used, significant engine damage will occur. Diesel fuel is used for larger vehicles, and gasoline is used for smaller vehicles. Propane is not often used for school buses and requires special procedures when fueling. Question 15. Be aware and blank when noticing a distracted driver. A. Keep a safe following distance. B. Speed ahead. C. Watch closely. D. Travel closely. The correct answer is A. Keep a safe following distance. When drivers are distracted, it can be dangerous to other drivers and pedestrians. 
A few signs of a distracted driver are speed changes, lane weaving, and slow reactions to traffic signals. Good drivers should be aware of unusual behaviors and keep a safe following distance if they feel another driver might be distracted. Question 16. A safe speed on a curve for a straight truck may be to blank when pulling double or triple trailers. A. Slow. B. Appropriate. C. Fast. D. Inconsistent. The correct answer is C. Fast. Double and triple trailers are less stable than other CDL vehicles, and drivers must take special care. Drivers need to steer gently and drive slowly around corners, on ramps, off ramps, and curves to prevent rolling over. Question 17. When crossing railroad tracks, when should a driver turn off his hazard warning lights? A. When it is safe to cross the tracks. B. When the bus clears the tracks. C. When the bus has cleared the tracks plus 100 feet. D. All the above. The correct answer is B. When the bus has cleared the tracks, school buses must always stop at railroad crossings. To warn other drivers, the hazard warning lights should be activated approximately 100 feet before the tracks. When the bus crosses the tracks, the driver must make sure the end of the bus has cleared before deactivating the warning hazard lights. Question 18. Because double and triple trailers are longer and need more space, drivers must increase their blank. A. Braking pressure. B. Following distance. C. Acceleration. D. Reaction time. The correct answer is B. Following distance. Double and triple trailers need more space and cannot be stopped or turned suddenly. Drivers should allow more following distance by leaving a larger gap when entering and crossing traffic. Drivers should also make sure there is clearance on all sides of their vehicle before changing lanes. Question 19. When parking, drivers need to be aware of how parking lots are arranged so they can blank when exiting a parking space. A. Pull straight through. B. Back up carefully. C. Pull around other vehicles. D. Align with other vehicles. The correct answer is A. Pull straight through. When parking, drivers need to be aware of how parking lots are arranged and plan ahead. Drivers should avoid parking in an area that will prevent them from driving straight ahead and put them in a position where exiting will be a difficult maneuver. Question 20. What is the meaning of high center of gravity? A. The higher the vehicle, the lower the center of gravity. B. The lower the vehicle, the higher the center of gravity. C. Tank vehicles do not have a high center of gravity. D. Much of the load's weight is carried high up off the road. The correct answer is D. Much of the load's weight is carried high up off the road. High center of gravity means that most of the vehicle's weight is carried high off the road. As a result, rollover is especially easy if the vehicle is not maneuvered correctly. Question 21. Does a Class A RV require a CDL if it weighs less than 26,000 pounds? A. Yes, every state requires a CDL if it weighs less than 26,000 pounds. B. Yes, but only in your state of residence if it weighs less than 26,000 pounds. C. No, a CDL is not required if the vehicle is purchased from a dealership. D. No, if your Class A RV weighs less than 26,000 pounds, you don't need a special license of any kind, regardless of what state you live in. The correct answer is... D. No. If your Class A RV weighs less than 26,000 pounds, you don't need a special license of any kind, regardless of what state you live in. If your Class A RV weighs less than 26,000 pounds, you don't need a special license of any kind, regardless of what state you live in. It is a good idea to be aware of future changes and revisions. Question 22. How many classes of hazardous materials are there? A. 5. B. 9. C. 11. D. 15. The correct answer is B. 9. Hazardous materials are separated into nine different classes. Their specific hazardous properties are defined and have distinct regular requirements for packaging, markings, and labels. The nine different classes of hazardous materials are 1. 
explosives, two, gases, three, flammable liquid and combustible liquid, four, flammable solid, spontaneously combustible and dangerous, when wet five, oxidizers, organic peroxides, six, poison, toxic material, infectious substances, seven, radioactive, eight, corrosives, nine, miscellaneous hazardous materials. Question 23. If a diamond-shaped hazard warning label does not fit on a package, the shipper may blank A. Place the label on the folder containing other shipping information. B. Group multiple packages together with one label. C. Put the label on a tag securely attached to the package. D. Fold the label and secure it with clear shipping tape. The correct answer is C. Put the label on a tag securely attached to the package. Shippers should always place the correct warning labels on hazardous material packages. The most hazardous materials are required to have a diamond-shaped hazard label. If the label is too big for a package and placed on a tag, the shipper must make sure the tag is attached securely. Compressed gas cylinders is an example of a package that would need to have a tagged label. Question 24. Battery fluid is listed under what class of hazardous material? A. 1. B. 4. C. 8. D. 9. The correct answer is C. 8. Battery fluid is hazardous class. 8. Corrosives. The placard used for battery fluid is white and black with a picture of corrosive fluid on hand and pipe with the number code 2794. Battery fluid can cause eye damage, temporary loss of vision or blindness, skin irritation or burning. If inhaled, battery fluid can cause nose and throat irritation with coughing and shortness of breath. Question 25. Rearward amplification can increase with the number and size of trailers in tow and cause a blank. A. Tractor protection effect. B. Combination vehicle effect. C. Shut off effect. D. Crack the whip effect. The correct answer is D. Crack the whip effect. Braking inside a curve can be dangerous, and drivers should always enter at a safe speed. A driver needs to enter a curve in a gear that will allow the driver to accelerate in the curvy and maintain control. Question 26. What is the National Response Center? A. Hotline to report unsafe hazmat drivers. B. An organization that gives information on how to load hazardous materials. C. An organization that coordinates emergency response to chemical hazards. D. Hotline for information about hazardous materials. The correct answer is C. An organization that coordinates emergency response to chemical hazards. Explanation. The National Response Center is staffed 24 hours a day by the Coast Guard. It is a designated point of contact to report all oil, chemical, radiological, biological, and etiological discharge into the environment. Question 27. A vehicle's air brake system should build air pressure back up from 85 to 100 psi within blank. A. 60 seconds. B. 2 minutes. C. 45 seconds. D. 30 seconds. The correct answer is C. 45 seconds. After air tanks have been applied during an air brake check, a driver needs to time how long it takes for pressure to build back up. For safety purposes, the driver needs to make sure the tanks fill up from 85 to 100 psi in 45 seconds. Question 28. What does a driver need to do to get a passenger endorsement on their CDL? A. Pass a knowledge test on driving safely, transporting cargo and transporting passengers. B. Pass a skills test for the class of vehicle they will be driving. C. Pass a knowledge test on air brakes, if applicable. D. All the above. The correct answer is D. All the above. Drivers who want to drive a Class A, B, or C bus must obtain a passenger endorsement on their CDL. A driver will need to answer a wide range of questions regarding vehicle inspections, driving in adverse weather conditions, all aspects of transporting cargo, passenger safety, and more. Question 29. What components on a school bus create blind spots? A. Mirrors. B. Brackets. C. 
support columns, D, all the above. The correct answer is D, all the above. Some components on a school bus can block the view of pedestrians or other vehicles. Blind spots can become a challenge when turning a bus and drivers must use special maneuvers to improve their view. Leaning forward and back, left to right, will help a driver overcome blind spots. Question 30. What are the five main components of a basic air brake system capable of stopping a vehicle? A. Compressor, reservoir, foot valve, brake chamber, brake lining, and drums. B. Regulator, reservoir, foot valve, brake chamber, brake lining, and drums. C. Compressor, cylinders, foot valve, brake chamber, brake lining, and drums. D. Compressor, reservoir, tanks, brake chamber, brake lining, and drums. The correct answer is A. Compressor, reservoir, foot valve, brake chamber, brake lining, and drums. A basic air brake system capable of stopping a vehicle has five main components. One, a compressor to pump air with a governor to control it. Two, a reservoir or tank to store the compressed air. Three, a foot valve to regulate the flow of compressed air from the reservoir when it is needed for braking. Four, brake chambers and slack adjusters to transfer the force exerted by the compressed air to mechanical linkages. Five, brake linings and drums or rotors to create the friction required to stop the wheels. Question 31. What kind of tank is not permanently attached to a vehicle? A. Portable tank. B. Cargo tanks. C. Bulkhead tank. D. Detachable tank. The correct answer is A. Portable tank. Portable tanks are loaded and unloaded while disconnected from a vehicle. After the loading and unloading process is completed, then the tank is attached to the transporting vehicle. Question 32. What is the definition of a surge? A. High voltage current caused by a damaged electrical connection. B. When a wave of liquid movement hits the end of the tank and pushes the truck forward. C. Sudden movement of liquid in various directions while maneuvering a tank vehicle. D. When a wave of liquid movement hits the front of the truck and pushes it backward. The correct answer is C. Sudden movement of liquid in various directions while maneuvering a tank vehicle. A. Liquid surge can be defined as liquid within a tanker, creating waves that rush to the front, back, left, or right of the vehicle. This occurs when starting, stopping, turning left, right, or taking curves. Surges can be very dangerous, as they can push a stopped vehicle through an intersection or cause a rollover on curvy roads. Question 33. What kind of tanks have bulkheads with holes for liquid to flow through? A. Smooth bores. B. Bulkheads. C. Baffled liquid tanks. D. Liquid tanker. The correct answer is C. Baffled liquid tanks. Baffled liquid tanks allow liquid to flow through using bulkheads with holes. The bulkheads control the back and forth and side to side liquid surge. Question 34. What is the danger zone around a school bus? A. 10 feet around the bus. B. Near the tires. C. In front of the bus. D. The rear of the bus. The correct answer is A. 10 feet around the bus. 10 feet completely around the school bus is considered the danger zone. When school bus lights are activated, cars should stop 10 feet away. Drivers must pay close attention and use their mirrors to check the danger zone when loading and unloading passengers. Question 35. If the weight of the vehicle is doubled, how many times must the stopping power be increased? A. If the weight is doubled, the braking force must be tripled to stop at the same distance. B. Stopping power does not need to be increased if the weight of the vehicle is under one ton. C. If the weight is doubled, the braking force must be doubled to stop at the same distance. D. None of the above. The correct answer is C. If the weight is doubled, the braking force must be doubled to stop at the same distance. If the weight is doubled, the braking force must be doubled to be able to stop at the same distance. If the speed is doubled, 
the braking force must be increased four times to be able to stop at the same distance. When weight and speed are both doubled, the braking force must be increased eight times to be able to stop at the same distance. Question 36. A yellow lamp will light up on the dashboard when the blank is not working properly. A. Transmission. B. Service brake. C. Parking brake. D. Anti-lock brake system. The correct answer is D. Anti-lock brake system. Many commercial vehicles have an anti-lock brake system, ABS. The ABS uses sensors to monitor the wheel's rotation. If an abnormal rotation is detected, the ABS forces split second releases of brake pressure. Question 37. Never load a cargo tank totally full. Liquids expand as they warm and you must leave room for the expanding liquid. This is called A. Density B. Outage C. Vapor escape D. Surge The correct answer is B. Outage Various liquids expand by different amounts and thus require different amounts of outage. The driver and person responsible for loading the tank vehicle must know the outage requirement for the cargo being handled. Question 38. Which combination of endorsements below is correct? A. School bus, passenger, tank vehicles, double-triple, hazardous materials. B. School bus, passenger, hydraulic lift gates, tank vehicles, hazardous materials. C. School bus, passenger, tank vehicles, double-triple, oversized heavy loads. D. School bus, passenger, tank vehicles, double-triple, commercial food hauling. The correct answer is A. School bus, passenger, tank vehicles, double-triple, hazardous materials. Verbatim. School bus, passenger, tank vehicles, double-triple, hazardous materials. Question 39. Blank semi-trailers should always be in first position behind the tractor, and the blank trailer should always be in the rear. A. Lightly loaded, heavier. B. Top heavy, lower. C. Heavily loaded, lighter. D. Lower, top heavy. The correct answer is C. Heavily loaded, lighter. Heavier loads should always be in the first position behind the tractor in order to stabilize the load. If the weight is in the rear of the load, the vehicle cannot handle swinging movements and sideway forces. Question 40. What is meant by the term friction? A. Friction is the force that resists movement between two surfaces in contact with each other. B. Friction is force that increases movement between two surfaces in contact with each other. C. Friction is the result of speed and distance divided by how many surfaces are in contact with each other multiplied by a factor of two. D. Friction is the force that absorbs the heat between two surfaces in contact with each other. The correct answer is A. Friction is the force that resists movement between two surfaces in contact with each other. Friction is the force that resists movement between two surfaces in contact with each other. To stop a vehicle, the brake shoe linings are forced against the machine surfaces of the brake drums, creating friction. This friction produces heat. Question 41. To ensure drivers have enough time to slow down and change lanes gently, they should blank. A. Watch brakes of the vehicle directly in front. B. Look far ahead. C. Drive ahead of other trucks and buses. D. Shift into a lower gear. The correct answer is B. Look far ahead. Looking far ahead is a defensive driving technique that all CDL drivers should practice. Drivers must maneuver double and triple trailers smoothly to prevent tipping over or jackknifing. Looking far ahead will give a driver more time to adjust their vehicle when they see a hazard ahead. Question 42. Anyone attending to a parked placarded vehicle must remain within blank of the vehicle. A. 75 feet. B. 25 feet. C. 100 feet. D. 50 feet. The correct answer is C. 100 feet. A person who is attending to a parked vehicle must be within 100 feet with a clear view. The person attending must also know what procedures are in place in the event of an emergency and be able to move the vehicles if needed. 
Question 43. All except one must be completed for a CDL with HAZMAT endorsement to be renewed. A. Pass the HAZMAT recertification knowledge test. B. Complete a state security threat assessment application. C. Pay fingerprint check. D. Submit a renewal application. The correct answer is B. Complete a state security threat assessment application. A federal, not state, security threat assessment application must be completed. Drivers must pass a written test about the regulations and requirements and a federal threat assessment application to receive clearance from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and the Transportation Security Administration. Question 44. What is a smooth bore tank? A. Tankers with smooth manhole covers for easy access. B. Baffled tanks that have smooth openings for easier cleaning. C. Tankers that are smooth on the outside. D. An unbaffled liquid tanker. The correct answer is D. An unbaffled liquid tanker. Another name for smooth bore tank is unbaffled tank. This means that there is nothing inside the tank, such as bulkheads or baffles, to slow down the movement of liquid. Surges in these tanks can be extremely strong. Question 45. What is required to become a school bus driver? A. 14 hours of classroom instruction. B. Pass a commercial general knowledge test. C. 6 hours of in-bus training. D. All the above. The correct answer is D. All the above. To become a school bus driver, a candidate must pass a school bus driver, physical examination, and an application for a CDL learner's permit must be submitted with the required fee. The driver will be required to pass a vision screening along with a commercial general knowledge test. In addition, the driver must also pass a passenger endorsement test, school bus endorsement test, and air brakes test, if applicable. The candidate is required to complete 14 hours of classroom training and 6 hours of in-bus training. Following training, a candidate must pass a road test including a pre-trip, basic maneuvers, and an on-the-road test. Question 46. When road conditions are slippery, drivers should blank A. Take back roads. B. Break frequently. C. Pass unsafe drivers. D. Avoid passing slower moving vehicles. The correct answer is D. Avoid passing slower moving vehicles. Adverse weather conditions such as snow or rain may cause slippery roads that may become hazardous. Driving too fast or jerky movements may cause reduced friction between a vehicle's tires and the road surface. Drivers should avoid passing slower moving vehicles in order to maintain a safe and steady speed. Question 47. All except one are ways shippers warn drivers and others about material hazards. A. Hazard warning labels on packages. B. Emergency response information and place cards. C. Proper shipping papers. D. Caution warning labels. The correct answer is D. Caution warning labels. Hazard warning labels and placards are used to identify the material being transported and their potential hazards. Placards are used to warn others and put on the outside of a vehicle and on bulk packages. Emergency response information must include the immediate hazard and other risks and what immediate precautions to take in the event of an accident. Drivers must make sure emergency response information is easily accessible in the event of an accident. Question 48. How far away should placards be placed away from other markings on the vehicle? A. 5 inches B. 3 inches C. 1 foot D. 15 inches The correct answer is B. 3 inches Drivers must make sure that placards are positioned on their vehicle 3 inches away from other markings. Some types of markings would include advertisements, company name, and more. Placards display important information and distractions away from these warnings need to be eliminated. Question 49. You must have a DCL to operate. A. Any single vehicle with a gross vehicle weight rating, GVWR, of 26,001 pounds or more. B. 
a combination vehicle with a gross combination weight rating, GCWR, of 26,001 or more pounds, provided the GVWR of the vehicles being towed is more than 10,000 pounds. C. A vehicle designed to transport 16 or more passengers, including the driver. D. Any size vehicle which requires hazardous material placards or is carrying material listed as a select agent or toxin in 42 CFR Part 73. Hazardous material endorsement. E. All of the above. The correct answer is E. All of the above. All of the above. Verbatim, including federal regulations through the Department of Homeland Security, requires a background check and fingerprinting for the hazardous materials endorsement. Question 50. What safety equipment is not found on a school bus? A. First aid kit. B. EpiPen. C. Reflective triangles. D. Body fluid. Cleanup kit. The correct answer is B. EpiPen. Some safety equipment is required by legislation, and some are installed in accordance with a school and or contractor's procedures. Safety equipment must be checked daily before a school bus goes out on the road. The first aid and body fluid. Cleanup kit must be readily accessible to the driver. A fire extinguisher must be fully charged and properly secure. Three reflective triangles are required and must be stored in a closed container. Question 51. It is important to break far in advance of a stop and increase your following distance to A. Control outage B. Prevent skids C. Control surge D. Prevent rollover The correct answer is C. Control surge Stopping suddenly can create a tremendous amount of surge and result in an accident. Break early when preparing to stop and increase following distance to allow for enough space to safely bring the vehicle to a complete stop. Question 52. What statement is not correct regarding placard placement? A. A total of two placards must appear on each side of the vehicle. B. Words and numbers placards need to be level and read from left to right. C. Kept clear of attachments or devices such as ladders or doors. D must be three inches away from any other markings. The correct answer is A. A total of two placards must appear on each side of the vehicle. Most often, four placards are required for a hazardous material shipment. A placard must appear on each side of the vehicle and must also appear on the front and back of the vehicle. The shipper is required to supply the driver with the placards with the required identification numbers. Question 53. How many mirrors are on a school bus? A, five, B, 10, C, seven, D, eight. The correct answer is C, seven. Mirrors are an important safety feature and candidates will be trained to correctly adjust each mirror according to the federal mirror standards. Mirrors on the left side of the bus include a left side flat and a left side convex. Mirrors in front of the bus include a left front crossover and a right front crossover. On the right side of the bus is a right side convex and a right side flat. An interior overhead rear view mirror is inside the bus, located above the driver. Question 54. How often does a driver's hazmat endorsement need to be renewed? A. Every year. B. Every three years. C. Every five years. D before the expiration of a driver's CDL? The correct answer is D. Before the expiration of a driver's CDL. Drivers will receive a recertification notice approximately seven months before the expiration of their CDL. Drivers will need to appear at a driver license center and show proof of citizenship or permanent residency and pass the hazmat knowledge recertification test. A DL-288 form must be submitted to the Driver License Center along with required fees. Question 55. What is the hazard of transporting liquid in a tank? A. The vehicle being pushed forward when stopping due to liquid surge. B. Leaks and spills. C. Fires explosions. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. There are many dangers involved with driving tanker trucks. 
Many times tanker trucks transport liquid cargo such as ethanol, gasoline, diesel, and more. These liquids are highly flammable and could be explosive in the event of an accident. Drivers must also be aware of their vehicle being pushed forward when stopping, since the liquid will surge. Leaks and spills are also another risk factor. Question 56. What mirrors are used to see students walking in front of the bus? A. Passenger rear view. B. Crossover. C. Convex. D. Flat. The correct answer is B. Crossover. Crossover mirrors are mounted at the right and left front fenders. When the crossover mirrors are adjusted properly, the driver should see directly in front of the bus, the front of the right and left front tires, and the area from the front bumper to the rear axle, and 12 feet perpendicular to the side of the bus. Question 57. What are some steps taken to secure a second rear trailer? A. Drive the tractor close to the trailer. B. Connect the emergency line. C. Charge the trailer's air tank. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. All drivers of double and triple trailers should have a basic knowledge of coupling and uncoupling safely. If the second trailer does not have a spring brake, the driver can set the emergency brake by driving the tractor close to the trailer and connecting the emergency line. After charging the trailer air tank, the driver needs to disconnect the emergency line. Chocks should always be set in place if there is any doubt about the brakes. Question 58. All except one are the responsibility of a driver transporting hazardous material. A. Make sure the shipper has identified, marked, and labeled the hazardous material properly. B. Placards his vehicle when loading, if required. C. Certify on the shipping papers that the shipment has been prepared according to the rules. D. Check for leaking packages. The correct answer is C. Certify on the shipping paper that the shipment has been prepared according to the rules. The shipper is responsible to certify that the shipment is in accordance with the HMR. The certification must be signed by a principal officer, partner, or employee of the shipper. Even though the shipper is responsible to certify shipping papers, the driver must confirm paperwork and packages are ready for delivery. Question 59. It is blank to perform a daily pre-trip inspection. A. Important. B. Required by law. C. Not necessary if the vehicle has already been used. D. Sometimes required. The correct answer is B. Required by law. It is a federal and state law that all drivers of CDL vehicles conduct a daily pre-trip inspection. The pre-trip inspection is important to detect any malfunctions with the vehicle, to keep the driver and passengers safe, and to help cut the cost of repair expenses. Question 60. Spare electrical fuses are considered to be part of the vehicle's blank. A. Electrical fuses repair kit. B. Electrical equipment. C. Emergency equipment. D. Extra mechanical supplies. The correct answer is C. Emergency equipment. Electrical fuses are required by DOT to be included in CDL's emergency equipment. At least one spare fuse is needed for each type of part and accessory that needs to be powered. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you still need more practice, then check out these videos or click the first link in the description to get your cheat sheet, which will help you pass your CDL exam on your first try.